Monty. Monty. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. You can use the mic if you want. It doesn't really matter. Sensation, AAA, Ola, the Wix Oxford, No Labels, and also the Wix for co sponsoring this event. event. Um, also, Brianna Addison here will be passing out note cards. If you guys have any questions in the panel stacks, when you're finished writing them, just raise them up, she'll collect them, and we'll give it out, and I'll read it out for the panelists. Um, we'll start off by the panelists naming themselves, um, why they want to be on the panel, and other information about themselves. So thank you all again for coming, and we really appreciate it. And now we're here. With our audience. Hi, so um, I'm Gabriella Ruiz. I'm from Spain, um, and I'm on this panel because I want to see uh, a positive change in 20 feminism. I'm Shanna, and I'm from Sri Lanka, and I'm on this panel uh, because I think growing up outside of the U.S. I bring a different perspective. Um, I'm Gabby Valentine, I'm a sophomore, and I'm on this panel because I think that um, the biracial voice isn't always heard, and I wanted to kind of hopefully give my perspective on that. I'm a Benjo Konko, I'm a senior, and I'm on this panel because I feel that sometimes uh, people forget that when it comes to feminism, it's not mm, very white-centric, it's more to it, and there's more complex. Hi, my name is Chen, I'm a sophomore, and the reason that I'm being on this panel, I'm not sure. <laughs> but actually, uh, before I came to the United States, uh, I'm an international student from Vietnam, actually. Uh, I was identified as a feminist, and when I come here, I was like, maybe I'm not. And now I really want to figure out if I am or not, and if I'm not, I really want to become one. If, and if I am, I want to become a better one. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Adriana, um, I'm a junior national. I'm doing this panel because I came into Swanee not knowing feminism was a thing, and now I'm here on the panel talking about feminism, so I must know, I may not know a lot, but I'm definitely here to just have a conversation with these women, just as a change. Hey y'all, um, my name's Mary, I am a sophomore from Los Angeles, originally from Mexico, and I am on this panel to um, Hopefully, get the voice of undocumented migrants out there, um, especially undocumented women um, on this panel. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. We'll first start out with the first question, which is What does feminism mean to you, and do you identify as a feminist? And this is for any of you to answer. <laughs> okay. Um, so, for me, what feminism means. Wait, what's the second part of that? Do you identify as a feminist? Okay. Um, so for them, for me, what feminism means is basically equality of the sexes. Like it's pretty like dictionary definition is um, how I view feminism, and I definitely identify I think as a feminist. Um, I, mean, I don't think it's, there's much explanation past that. It's like yeah, I identify as feminist. Mm -hmm. Feminism to me is also kind of the textbook definition of it: um, the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes, and I do identify as. Yeah, I think um, feminism is the same for me, but um, I think we need to like pay attention to internationally, not just in the United States. It's all like everyone everywhere. And I, I think of it more as like justice between sexes, you know, um, equality and justice. Um, it, they are both on the, on the parallel. But when I think about feminism, I also think about um, in terms of respect, if I am being respected. I respect other women and I respect other uh, sexes or genders or yeah. <laughs> Well, I say feminism is first having the sister within the woman because I think we tend to think feminism is all about going for the men <coughs> equality, but we when we do that, we forget that we also have to be equal amongst each other as women, 
And we fail sometimes to do that. So first being equal with each other and loving our sisters, whether whether she's black, white, Asian, Chinese, gay, straight, trans, and then understanding what that means to be a woman in this world and then going for equality for all women in this world, like against I guess the male. How would you characterize the central message of Salonis feminism? Is it complete enough to address the entire <coughs> the entirety of our community? Well, I think Swanee's feminism is very centered around sex positivity, and there's nothing wrong with that, like, that's great, but I think it's missing a huge chunk of the message. It's very restrained to where our lives are here right now, and it's not really going to carry us forward into the future or into our lives back at home at all. So, yeah, it's great, but it's not enough. Well, I'm just a little bit curious about uh, the people who come here, because I see a lot of amazing people here in a lot of community places. Uh, do you guys identify yourself as a feminist? If you do, can you raise your hand? And I would never know that you all I, I identify if you don't come here and if you are identified like publicly or whatever. Maybe because I don't know a lot of people. But at the same time, I think that's also one movement that someone really has on feminism. Sometimes it's a little bit exclusive in terms of who is identified, who have the voice to speak out loud. I would say um, I agree a lot with Gabriella um, that our feminism is a lot based on sex positivity and also on um, kind of trying to get rid of sexual assault on our campus and things like that, which are all very prevalent in our lives right now. Which is, I think, why it's so important within our feminism as a as a school. Um, but I also agree that it is it is really hard because we <coughs> we as feminists, you know, at, at least a lot of or I as a feminist, you know, when I think of feminism on this campus, I think of sexual assault, and I also think of sex positivity, and I think about LGBTQ rights, but I, I don't really ever think about um, what this feminism, what does my feminism mean. When it comes to you know fighting for my sisters that are you know working for their documentation, for my sisters who are kind of dealing with everyday prejudices within the classroom because they have a different accent, um, and so I think that our our feminism doesn't really analyze those parts of of culture here, um, not yet anyway. And hopefully this panel will help us start those conversations. And along the lines of analyzing those aspects of culture, there's also those aspects of where, like when we leave Swanee outside, because we tend to forget that, like, yeah, we're learning about sexual assault and sex positivity, but when you go to the real world, people don't know what that is. People don't understand what rape is. People don't understand what sex positivity is. People, you know, we're more focused on um, the um, gender gap with um, <clears throat> financial and things like that, payment. You know, and we're focused on what's the national, like education and the, the um, jobs that women tend to get once they leave. That's what I would love Swanee to, what I would to do is focus on more things that when we leave Swanee, we can use in our toolbox. Mm -hmm. Because we can know what rape is, but our definition and someone else's definition is different. And trying to have that conversation with them, it's, Kind of can can be defeated. So focusing on things where their mind is already there and it's focused, you know, it's better to start where they know and then go into aspects that they don't know. If that makes any sense. So focusing more on things that we can use outside of the There are also issues that uh, don't directly affect many of us, uh, but do affect many women outside of the U.S. and in many different cultures, like child marriage. Um, arranged marriages in certain cultures, um, education where certain women or in certain cultures, girls aren't allowed to have an education. And these issues aren't as relevant to us in an academic institution, <coughs> but forgetting that they exist out there is excluding uh, a large group of people from the movement. Does feminism differ with egalitarianism? We need to ask, if so, why? <laughs> As about like you know, 
Yeah, uh, I think this kind of touched on something we were talking about last night, but like, for me, it, it kind of irks me with like, I'm not a feminist, I'm an equalist, or like, I'm a humanist, um, <coughs> because it's like, well, for I, this is this is something that I was thinking about, is that like, if you can't identify as a feminist, is is it, I think the, you need to also analyze why it is that that is, and I think that for a lot of people, it's because they don't want to be identified as, like, femi feminism is, is like, fem like, feminist, like, a fem, <laughs> feminine, feminine is the word I'm looking for, yeah, <laughs> feminist is feminine, and, like, how, like, people, especially maybe men who are interested in the movement, like, don't want to be, be identified with feminine, so to say you're an equalist or a humanist, you know, is, is easier to say, but I mean, like, I think that, I think that, you know, people should definitely check why that is, that they don't identify as a feminist, and if it is because you don't want to be identified with the feminine, <coughs> Just because, uh, personally, I don't identify as a feminist. Um, just because of the way that I have seen feminism work in this world. Um, and I would consider myself an equalist just because I do believe that there are issues that the male sex is going through that us women can't identify with. But they also, no one's fighting for them. And so that's why I, and I have nothing wrong with like the whole feminist, fuck that. It's all about just make, you have to, if everybody is behind you, you have to pull up everybody with you so that we can all run in the race together. And that's what I identify as equal. I think you're right. And I think the problem with <coughs> that, I don't have a problem with it. I think it becomes problematic when you, you use that to overshadow someone else's opinion or someone else's like uh, own experience. For instance, like if you say, well, feminism, it, it shouldn't be feminism, it should be. Uh, humanism or equal, 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 whatever. Um, <laughs> but you know, like, I think that when you try to, when you try to, like, um, kind of put that to, to signify more than, like, you know, a, a woman's experience, because a woman's experience is sometimes, and it's often more, um, like, it's more oppressive. Males are more privileged than women are, and I think that when, when you know, like you put a man's voice above a woman's voice, it just it's going, with, you know, it's just repeating the cycle of oppression. And I think that that's when it becomes problematic. I'm not saying that men's issues are not, you know, as relevant as women's issues. I'm just saying that sometimes they get more attention than men. <coughs> and I think I reply to that also and being like, I don't see why. Feminism can't encompass men's issues because I think that they entirely do. I think that there are a lot of things that, you know, like, you know, if, if feminism is really working to break down like things like the patriarchy, there are things that like men are dealing with because of the, you know, the patriarchy and the, the society that has been built around androcentrism and all of these things. And so I think that like feminism can help men a lot. And you know, I so in that sense, I don't even see the difference. So we got like two note cards. I'm just gonna combine them, kinda, because they kinda look the same. Um, how can the feminist message become more accessible to males? Why do men need feminism? And also, <coughs> like, add into that, do you think men have a place in the feminist movement? If, if so, what should be their role, and how do they fit in? Okay, yes, men definitely have a place in the feminist movement, like, for sure. Like, we want an equal society, which means that every movement should include everyone. So we need men to have the exact same roles that the women have in this movement. Like, we're going through, like, sure our issues are different, but they're all like, very similar on some levels. Like, and they can be, like, we can, e like, make them equal to a certain extent. We can, like, make equivalents. Does that make sense? And men definitely need to participate in the feminist movement. We want equality for all the genders. So, yeah, men are part of that, for sure. There are also issues that are relevant to men under the movement. Um, like concerning jobs, where in certain areas out there, um, there are jobs that are typical male jobs, and then jobs that are usually female dominated. But what about the man that wants to be a nurse, mm -hmm. or, or the woman that wants to be an engineer? Mm -hmm. So there should be this ability for men to to <coughs> to have whatever employment they wish, and that falls under. 
and also just the social aspect of it, you know, like boys don't cry, real men don't do this. No, real men show emotion, real men are comfortable with crying, real men are comfortable with their sexuality where if another man compliments him on his outfit, he'd be like, thank you, and not feel like, oh my God, someone's attacking me or trying to like sexually be aggressive towards me, you know? So with that, feminism includes males, you know? I mean, it has men in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it includes males. <laughs> it includes males, and they have an important goal. And then I think with all movements in general, people tend to think, oh, it's just for this specific group, so I'm going to alienate myself from it. But no, you're included. The whole point of the group is to, like, we're equals, right? It's to gain that opportunity for it to, um, everyone on equal level, everyone have a voice and chance, and so we also need those people, it seems like we're fighting for to come in and say, you know what, I agree with you. I'm going to help you have your voice heard a little bit more in places that it may not be. Do you all feel welcome in feminine spaces on campus? For example, the web? It's not, it's not that you don't feel welcomed necessarily as much as different. Like, sure, they like to feel inclusive and like they want you to be a part of their group, and but sometimes it feels like your voice can't be heard. I would say that I think, based on just who I am as, as an individual, my group of friends, the people I associate with, it's really easy for me to go to, to feminist areas and to, to be a part of feminist movements. To, Go to the Wick and feel comfortable there, but I will say that there are other places on campus uh, that I don't feel comfortable, and other movements that I feel like I should be at least a little bit involved in, and I don't feel comfortable being in those. So, yes, but I mean, there are other places that aren't as welcome, and there is also movements towards progress. No, I agree with Debbie. Like, I feel very welcome in the Wick and um, being able to participate in conversations regarding feminism. Um, but yeah, I think there are other places that um, I would find that a little more difficult. I think it's not necessarily like not feeling welcome, but I think it's just like what appeals to you in general. Like um, specific events don't necessarily relate to you, or sometimes sometimes you don't feel like you you connect with you know like what's being talked about, or you just don't feel that like you should go because you you just don't. You're not interested in it, and I think that um, that's 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 a lot of why people, or me as myself, I, I'm not as involved in like women's center um, events and stuff because I just don't feel like they they appeal to me. Along those lines, um, the week is awesome. They're a powerhouse, mm -hmm. but there are certain events where you know sometimes you wish they'll reach out, and it's not their fault because we've had several conversations, so it's not their fault. But reach out to more multicultural groups because <coughs> honestly, I think this is probably um, let's be honest, the first like I think the first year this like multicultural like separate group has been created for feminism, and I feel like come on now, like how long has the work been that for? That should already be included, you know, and that's that's the problem with <laughs> that's the problem with a lot of feminist um, movements. We tend to forget that. Hey, colored people exist. <laughs> colored females have issues separate from the white, yes. you know, standards. And I'm not attacking whites and blacks and the, but like there's certain things that we deal with that isn't just your thing too. <coughs> yeah, you're a woman, but I'm a colored woman. So there's so much more complexities <coughs> that I deal with that you have to deal with. You know, like whenever they talk about the wage gap, they always talk about. Um, you know, a woman compared to a male is 77 cents, but that's not true at all. As, me as a black woman, that 77 cents is more like, what, 50 cents or something? It's even bigger difference, you know? So we tend to forget that there are more complexities to it. So it's just with those feminine spaces, I wish they had more minority voices that can say, hey, you actually did this. It's more personal, you know? And as a segue to that, how does your intersectional background impact your perception of inclusivity of feminism in Suwannee? So where you come from, how does that, your perspective to Suwannee then more inclusive? I think coming from a background where uh, women are not so as 
perspective, as in here in America, I was really surprised when I come to this house and have a lot of gentlemen open the door for me. And I think it's great. Uh, when I came to this house, though, <laughs> Um, well, I think from my own personal experience about my academic uh, focus here at Sawani, econ, where they have a lot of stereotypes about the people who do that type of majors, about like the typical white trade males, very affluent, um, sometimes can be identified as assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad nothing anyone, because it's wrong, it's wrong. I have a lot of really good friends as an econ major. And sometimes it's, it's very challenging to be uh, an Asian kid who, you know, with another type of stereotype, and also a woman, an Asian woman who will be identified, she just looks smart, um, really don't have any type of, type of skill besides doing really fast math. <laughs> <laughs> and my freshman year, I was struggling trying to fit in that kind of environment where there's stereotypes for myself and then from other people to me. And this year I think I have done a better job of trying to ignore that, leave that stereotypes behind and trying to come and reach out to the people who I think that I would never get along with. And it, it worked, it works. Uh, I have been working and friends with a lot of people that I would have never imagined myself talking to. And I think that's that's a way um, that Uju was talking about, like some women of colors, women of minorities, we are not being respected enough, we don't get enough attention. But I also think that coming from us, we also have to try to make our voice heard and to make the extra effort of making that happen. Because sometimes, you know, it's majority and minority, and it's a minority do not make enough effort. It's, it's hard to get majority attention. Um, I'd say, I mean, like, I, background for me, so I'm half black, half white, but I grew up in a very white, kind of suburban environment for a lot of my life, with also a lot of, you know, black influence in my family, but um, coming to Sewanee and dealing with that with feminism, I think it's easier for me than probably a lot of people on this panel to identify with a lot of the issues that come from, uh, that are major issues in feminism here and like sexuality and things, but I think that something that has been harder for me, especially personally to grasp, is you know conversations about sex positivity and sexuality and things like that, which are fantastic and we need to be having those conversations and like women do whatever you want, that's awesome. But like I, I think it's not necessarily as realized yet in those conversations that like when you come from a colored background, there are already other things adding on to your sexuality. You're fetishized. Like I had a guy in high school who kept suppressing the black side of me, it's like, oh, I'm dating a Brazilian. It's like, no, you're not, you're dating a Brazilian black girl. Like, And so I think that that's a conversation that isn't had so much, is that like, what else adds to the issues of sexuality here, you know? Like, you know, like, when are we gonna stop saying, you know, like, oh, someone has yellow fever, or, oh, somebody, you know, you just kind of want a little bit of color in your life right now. Like, those, I think that those kinds of things are not necessarily brought up in the major mainstream Sawani um, conversation, and I think I also agree with you in saying that, like, it is something that we as, you know, minority feminists or not feminists, whatever you identify as, to also bring that into the conversation. So, I mean, it's one thing to say that that conversation isn't happening, it's another thing to say, I'm going to, to bring that into the conversation. Um, and so I think that that is how that affects my intersection. Here. Um, I think you're right. Um, I'm like, I come from a background in where like, um, like we as minor women, we have to be strong because you know, like we're faced with uh, <coughs> on top of being like you know um, <coughs> undocumented, we have to be you know. We, there's a lot of labor that goes into uh, you know our daily lives. We can't just get super good jobs. You know, we're not as educated as other people. Um, but like also like the group, the people that I associate with, they're radical feminists. They're like people. They there's a solidarity between you know transgender women, transgender women, you know, who are trying to reclaim their background and who are trying to reclaim their themselves as women, too. Um, and so, like, I grew up around those type of leaders, you know, and um, just coming here and having, like, the table shift on me, it's just, like, it's very different, you know, and it's also, um, 
it's kind of like trying to trying to see other perspectives at the same time, but at the same time, it's kind of like missing something. You know, I'm, I'm missing that like you know those, those strong leaders that I that I grew up with. You know, I mean, for me, um, I think one of the most shocking things um, is I grew up in Spain where um, although machismo is incredibly prevalent, like, if y'all think people cackle in the U.S., like, seriously, go to Spain. It's insane, like, it's ridiculous. Like, kind of stuff, like, I'm afraid to, like, walk home alone at night, like, without a guy with me. Please, I'm never going to cackle without a guy. Daytime, nighttime, it doesn't matter. But women at home are like, there's lots of women in engineering and lots of women who are doctors and CEOs and who go into politics. Like, we have a lot of female politicians. And, um, and then I came to Swanee, and it's almost like the tables were turned on me. Like, there is social violence here too. Like, there is still some chauvinism, but it's not quite as prevalent as it is at home. And yet, there's like almost no women in engineering. There's very few women in CEO positions. Very few women in politics in the U.S. And it's like feminism for me got turned on its head because like I was really identified with feminism. And then I came here, and like there's all these women being like, "Yes, we're feminists. Like, we're gonna do this." And yet. There's like no women in these fields. There's like no women, like, well, not no women, but obviously there are women, but like there are very, very few women that are going out there and making like big names for themselves in other fields, which is kind of shocking to me. So I'm like still trying to deal with like this kind of like feminist culture shock, kind of like everything got flipped for me. And it's something that I think we really need to talk about how it's very different. Just as a segue, what would an inclusive movement look like for you? And how would you achieve that in Sewanee? So this is the part where we talk about not just problems and things of feminism, but actually talking about tangible goals that can be achieved on campus. <laughs> don't necessarily affect the majority of students in Swanee. So maybe issues that affect groups from different um, religions, class, um, different, um, different <coughs> cultural backgrounds, countries, all of that. And in addition, to, so there are issues that are relevant to people in these different groups, but then there are issues that are relevant to people like outside the US in general. So, um, and like like I said earlier, forgetting these conversations or these issues um, creates a huge problem because I've heard so many people say, why do we need feminism? Uh, women are more or less equal in the U.S. Maybe in the U.S., like in your experience, but outside, you know, there's a girl in Pakistan who is who wants an education. Um, there's a girl in India who's being married off at a young age when she's four years old, and so. It's a, this movement should include everyone. And so not having conversations about this makes us forget that they exist. Because we don't run into them on a daily basis. We don't hear their stories. And I think that's important, that these stories should come out uh, and be talked about. And just like, really quick, in addition to like answering that question about making more inclusive, it's just like, this also discuss like what efforts can be made. And also, just, also I want you guys to think, be thinking about how we can create a more positive and open environment to discuss these issues and things like that. So. Well, I think having um, more panel discussions like this and having a lot of people show up, this is awesome. So after this, you can talk to your friends, talk more, you know, there's more issues, obviously. And let's be honest, discussions don't really do a lot. So it starts the conversation, it starts the action, but for me, like the action, and I know it's so radical, but having more like, you know, so the wick is a powerhouse, right? Why isn't there a black female uh, color person? You know, let's have more of that. And like, I don't know, let's have a multicultural feminist house. I mean, maybe that's too much, but maybe the wick can resolve that because it's such a house, such a beautiful place, and they do a lot of great things. Let's have more like, and not just, because um, I'm seeing a lot of residents that are in the wick. Um, more uh, multi-racial, um, but I just don't want one. Can we have two, three? You know, like, let's have more. So it's not just about black, I mean, Asian, Latino. You know, let's have more. I mean, 
let's do that. And then also, um, I don't know, what else can we do? We can have more events. Mm -hmm. To do that, um, I, I feel like a lot of minority groups feel excluded from the movement. And that is why maybe we don't have a black co-director at the week because a black woman has not applied. Mm -hmm. um, why is that though? Why is that? Like, can we do more events that can garner? Can we, because you guys have the auxiliary board, right? I didn't know that that existed. Mm -hmm. So like maybe having more, you know, I don't know how, <coughs> but like having more of those events with auxiliary board where you can introduce multiculturalism and then maybe like they'll feel more comfortable going to the WIC and say, hey, I want to be a director. Mm -hmm. Well, I think along with that also that we have to I think that an action that like everyone in this room can do, and this goes on to something that we said yesterday at the uh, SAE race. Hawkson was saying that like you know, as a woman of color, you're always or a person of color, you're always kind of stepping outside of your comfort zone and so on. And I think that like we need more of that of people stepping outside of their comfort zone. Like I went to the MCC one day and saw a white guy, and I was like, like what are you doing here? And I was like, this is actually really cool that you're here. So like, if you identify as someone that is in the majority of Sewanee, like why aren't you coming, you know, come to more multicultural events. If you are, you know, come to an MCC party, come to, a, you know, do something, you know, step outside of that comfort zone because the comfort zone should not just be for multicultural people to have to step outside of. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think that like, and I, I mean, I, I would also challenge maybe the multicultural people in the room also, like, I know you're outside of your comfort zone, like, but also, you know, take that time to take that 30, 45 minutes. Go to a wicked <coughs> place. You're like, I'm going to be the only black person. Talk about that. Talk about it? For real? Oh, me, something. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I know that a lot of multiple like, people were already stepping outside. I mean, I can't even say we because I, I feel like a lot of times I don't have to step outside of a lot of those same cultural boundaries. But I mean, the the worst that's gonna happen is you're the only black person in the room, and like, when is that? That's not gonna be the first time that's happened to uh, the first Asian person. Like, that's not gonna be the first time that that's happened. And I think that like when you put yourself into those situations and allow yourself to be open to those conversations. Um, it's really helpful. Like I used to get really offended when people say, "Well, oh, well, what are you?" I'm pretty racially ambiguous. Like, I, I, I've learned to accept that. Like when people ask that, it's not because they're doing it out of aggression. It's not because they're doing that out of judgment. It's, it's general like curiosity. Generally, sometimes it's rude, but most of the time it's <laughs> most of the time. You know, I think we need to open ourselves up to have these conversations, and that doesn't just extend to multicultural people, but also, you know. The white population of Sewanee, like, tell us about your background. Where do you come from? Like, I want to know what your struggles are, just as much as I would hope you want to know what my struggles are. So, yeah. I think uh, being a student leader, uh, leading a lot of student organizations on this campus, and I know that a lot of people here out in the same position as me, I feel like we have a very important roles at Sewanee of starting these movements and starting this. And one thing I, I have a funny story about actually this event. So a few days ago, uh, I think Kathleen and Rial emailed uh, me about having a presentation co-sponsoring this event. And the email literally said, you don't have to pay anything or do anything. We just want your name on, on the poster. And that happened so many times in Sewanee about a lot of events. Sometimes there's so many you know, names of organizations or departments on the posters about some really important issues. And we actually didn't do really anything. The, the main organizer would be, I don't know, the WIC or, I'm sorry, I'm not that aware. <laughs> <laughs> but we really want to do things with, with everyone. Um, Asian Sensation, and AAA, uh, OCCU, CASA, and OLAP. We do want to actually meet with leaders from a lot of backgrounds here on campus and make a change from that, not just having our name on the poster or giving you like, all money to buy pizza. Uh, we want to have our input in that, to have our issues also being discussed in the event that you guys have on campus. And I think that's something that all the Sewanee student leaders and incoming leaders and Sewanee students in general should actually 
really techy considerations. Yeah. Um, okay. With finding, like, uh, changing the situation on campus, I think the week can throw all kinds of events. It can be anything. But until people learn to lose their fear of the word feminism, nothing is going to change. Because that is the reason people don't come to the week or to events, is because they hear the word feminism and they automatically assume it's men, <laughs> men blaming um, radical women that are against everything associated with men. And until people are able to change that conception they have, you will always run into these issues. And I just want to note someone wrote down on the note card just for you all that. There was a black co-director of the WIC two years ago. In addition, next semester, there is an African-American female who will be living in the WIC next and semester. And a biracial. And a biracial having to have white Yeah, we'll be living in the WIC next year. Biracial um, thing. Okay. Um, also, the next question is, what role does the LGBT movement play in the feminist movement? And do any of you identify as LGBTQ plus? And how does that how does that affect your multicultural intersectional background? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I so I guess I identify as mostly lesbian now. Um, <laughs> I definitely see them being separate issues. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I know that the. Sorry, bringing the wig up. They're killing you up here. Um, but the wig definitely does help a lot um, with uh, LGBT issues that Virginia Community House and Spectrum try to you know, put on. But um, as far as the LGBT community as a whole, I, I don't really see a place for feminism. That's on my campus. <laughs> In the real world, uh, I can see there's there's a trans movement, there's a movement for lesbians, there's a movement for Black lesbians, Asian lesbians, you name it, whatever. They got it, um, but they're not all they're not coming together at all. Um, and I guess we'll, there's a big bridge between LGBT people and feminism. That's just how I see it. I would argue. I mean, like, okay, I identify like. Cool, but like that was never like I was like oh, okay that's cool but, like glad you're gay kind of thing and I think coming to Solani <laughs> but like coming to Solani and I think for me the introduction into feminism was also the introduction into LGBTQ rights and plus rights um, and I mean like I don't know for me it it opened it to say that I'm a feminist it felt like to me it was also a chance for me to explore well am I am I a feminist and am I bisexual am I a feminist and do, am I interested in this type of you know person, and so I, I mean, and that's just you know a different, a completely different, totally individual opinion. Is that you know I think for me, coming into feminism also kind of allowed me to be more introduced to the LGBTQ plus community, and I think that might just be my own personal experiences with the people um, I'm around on a daily basis. So. Yeah, like coming from an African background, um, born in Nigeria, raised and then moved here. Um, <clears throat> feminism and just like sexuality was never really talked about. You know, it's a very patriarchal, uh, let me speak from Nigeria, only <laughs> patriarchal place. But I was always in my household, like, I was allowed to speak up. Even though know, they didn't like it, I was allowed to speak up. I was a feisty kid, I still am. I like to fight all the time with like parents and uncles and aunts, and I'm not supposed to be a very big no no, but like I do because that's just who I am. So, like, coming to Swanee, honestly, um, even in high school, I didn't even know what gay and lesbian and all that. Like, I didn't really, just like, whatever you do, whatever. 
you know, that like in coming to Sony, like that was becoming a real issue, real like thing that I'm like trying to get to understand more. I don't have a lot of gay friends. Um, I don't have a lot of trans friends. Maybe one day I'll have some, you know. Like I think these type of issues it it depends on how you're exposed to it. So with me personally, I'm still trying to figure out what feminist is. You know, I hear a lot of feminists like, um, are you if you don't take classes or minor in women gender studies, you're not a feminist. I don't believe that. You can be a feminist and not have to take classes and know those lingos and education because you'll educate yourself. Um, and so just learning how to what feminism is, I think honestly, uh, sorry, I just like talking about it. I think with feminism and LGBT and then the extra the pluses, those issues, they there's it's all about the oppression of the minority. So I think if it, it hasn't already been talked about how we can bridge that gap, it should. Yeah. Because we're all in the same boat, let's be honest. We're all fighting against that stereotypical, maybe it's not so stereotypical, Anglo-Saxon, straight, white male. You know, we're all fighting against that oppression. So it's one of those things that, honestly, it's kind of sad because I read a lot of things where there are like radical feminism and other liberal feminism, I don't know. There's too much separation, but like, um, and how they talk about trans women because they're male to female can't be feminist or can't talk about this, and that breaks my heart because it's like, what? Just because they were male and then they want to be female and then say, hey, I'm a feminist, I'm a woman, I'm oppression, they, they, they get so, you know what I mean? Like, we keep separating ourselves, so I feel like with me, it's just, I keep trying to educate myself and, you know, talk to more people. And hopefully, Tony can do that too. Some more progress. I know this sounds cliche, but like solidarity is always like a big important thing. And um, like I, I mentioned this, but I do have trans friends, and I do have um, you know, and I I see the relationship with like especially in the, in Los Angeles, like the relationship between like the form our forms of oppression, you know, like trans women who are put into jails that are you know mostly male. You know they they suffer even more than you know like and then us as undocumented people who are detained you know like it's the same person industrial complex you know situation and so I see those relationships and that's why I say like solidarity because we go through the, you know similar um, issues and I think um, I don't think it's like solidarity in the sense that oh because you're trans like all of a sudden I know <coughs> because you're my friend I know like what you're going through no like I don't know what you're going through but I'm here for you. you know? And I'll listen to you, and and that's I think that's what it is, you know, to, to be in solidarity with somebody. Yeah, I will, I think also if you have a tendency to identify with a movement that likes equality, you're gonna identify with other movements that also like equality, whether it's your specific group or somebody else's. So though you may not identify as LGBTQ plus, you're gonna be able to associate in some way. Because if you believe in equality for yourself, you should believe in equality for everybody. So there's going to be the same number. So we have two more questions that we're going to ask you all. Um, the first question is, first before the last is, as an intersectional feminist, do you believe that the Golden Clitoris display was best was placed in the best, most effective venue? Why or why not? Um, it was placed in the library where most students go and and spend a lot of their time. So I think it was a great spot to have it. It sparked a lot of conversation, and that's what it should have done. It should have sparked conversation. That's, that, that was the intention. Um, and I think having the Strat players in, a, in the library, seeing it for a couple of days, like brought it to people's minds, and then the issue that comes with that stands behind it, the fact that a lot of females don't even know their own body. And so there are so many issues that come with this that we need to be reminded of. And so I think it was a great place to be. Uh, I, think that, uh, I think that looking at it as an intersectional feminist, um, I, I see nothing wrong with where it was placed. Um, I think that you know, a lot of people you know, were afraid because older people are coming in, younger people are coming in, but like, it wasn't a sexual Thing. And I think that it brought up a lot of conversations that need to be talked about. You know, like I brought my mom to see it, 
And my mom was like, well, I mean, I don't think this is the biggest issue because, like, what about other people in other countries? You know, they're dealing with stuff that's not, you know, based on the clitoris. And I'm like, um, female genital mutilation, that's kind of a thing. Uh, child brides, that's a thing. Those are things that have to do with the female body. Those are things that have to do with female sexuality. You know, and they obviously do with a lot of other things, like, you know, <coughs> and economic, economical and political things also. But, like, I think that the clitoris does appeal to an intersectional point of view, too, because it makes you talk about that. It's like, you know, the fact that we, as in America, in, in a liberal arts institution are, you know, blowing up about a polyvolt clit is, is incredible to think about that that was a big uproar, but we don't uproar about the fact that there are girls in many different countries in Africa who are having their bodies literally mutilated, like, clitoris is cut off, like, why is that? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> outside of my own, my own experience, I think to do other, I think to do otherwise. So how can every movement include everyone in relation to especially to women and less than one? Can I answer this one? You yeah. said Can you yeah. repeat the question? Yeah. As a white feminist, I don't think it's my place to lead battles outside of my own experience. So how can every movement include everyone, especially in relation to feminism as well? Well, for I <laughs> okay, for that question, I, I appreciate you acknowledging the fact that you don't have that experience to lead, but don't get the wrong way, but it's just like me saying as an um, African feminist, I don't have the place to lead with white feminists, I do, but that's what to lead in, and I have to do that. Does that make sense? So I step out of my comfort zone, and I help lead your movement, but you also have to understand, just because it's not your experience, doesn't mean you can't empathize and sympathize and say, hey, what can I do as the main voice in this movement to bring you up, to make sure your voice is heard? So like, I think people kind of get, um, what's the word? Because it's not my experience, it's not my issue, or I don't know anything about it, and they use that as a hindrance to stop them from wanting to reach out and talk to people. Don't let that, you know? Like, um, Gabby said it perfectly, and even in the SAE um, panel, uh, Minorities step out of their comfort zone every day. So I ask you to do the same as a white feminist or as the majority. Step out of your comfort zone too. I promise you it's not that bad. You meet great people and you learn so much. And like honestly, I think once people start doing that and realize that it's just not my experience because we're fighting for ourselves. Yes, we're fighting for equality, but there's been so much more people in this umbrella that get left out because <coughs> we're also tunnel vision on my experience, my experience, what I can do to better myself. This movement is about everyone, right? So we need to start like stepping out our own comfort zone and saying, hey, I'm talking about me a lot. What can I do as a feminist to make sure your feminism is heard? Make sure what you want in feminism is heard. I think a great example of that is, and a great example I think to answer specifically to whoever said white feminist is in the crowd, um, and something, you know, we've discussed with intro to women, and things like that, it's like, you can, 
be a, there's a million different ways to be a leader. Like I went to some like, student council camp, like you learn that there's a million different th ways to be a leader, and that doesn't necessarily mean always being at the forefront. Like I mean, Kelso was a huge leader in this movement, but you know, like she's you know, but she allowed for an intersectional voice for all of us, and so I think that you know, for whoever said white feminist is in the crowd, who's you know scared of of encroaching on a multicultural uh, environment, like. Don't be afraid of, of wanting to care about these issues, but also, you know, do be open to allowing the, the multicultural standpoint, especially if that's what you're focused on, to kind of be the spotlight rather than your own leadership within it. If that makes sense, does that make sense at all? No, that's perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I think people should also do your research if you're, I mean, like what you were saying, get out there and talk to people. Look up all kind of terms that you need to. Talk to these professors, talk to these faculty, and just understand people's perspectives so that you can't, whatever you decide to lead, that you do it effectively. <coughs> um, and going off that point, one on I think never be afraid to ask questions and to show that you're not that smart. <laughs> uh, I swear when I come here alone so much, I when I was when I was freshman, I was so scared because I really don't understand what the like you guys talking about, the language and the fancy terms. And I still don't understand a lot, but I think get what I'm gonna say out of it would be to not be afraid to ask questions and to show that you generally want to know and want to learn about it. So if you don't have the time to actually go on Google and like look up the words, or ask your friends who are a, a strong supporters or the forefront leaders of the, of the movement, or just ask the people around Suwani. Suwani is such a, a great place. Like, the one is so helpful in, in that kind of sense. Um, I think uh, like a responsibility lies on us too as women um, who who have experiences outside of the typical Somali feminism uh, experience. So that I think there, there's a responsibility on us to educate others. Um, because if they don't have that experience, it's hard for them to understand or they don't, they're not made aware. And so we should be able to spark that conversation and start that conversation with other people. And then hopefully you receive the support group. I think that, like, um, what's it called? You don't necessarily have to lead a movement in order to, like, help somebody or support somebody. You don't have to do that. Like, if I tell you about my issues, this is my own experience, you know, but you're going to go and tell your other, like, friends who are maybe just, maybe white, just like you, or who are also, you know, like me, like Latino, whatever. Um, and I think that just getting the message out there is essential. I think, um, I think everyone's experience is their own. They all come from different backgrounds, and that doesn't necessarily mean that what they what this they, what they say is right or wrong. But I feel like um, you, as like I guess a white feminist, whatever, um, if if you carry that like that experience from someone else, you're gonna go and tell other people, and you know they're gonna get that that person's experience to another person. You know they're gonna talk about it. Like I talk about like I have trans friends in LA. You know like I'm telling you about their experiences. So now you are you you have more awareness about their you know their issues and stuff. So I think that that's a good way to show support and to show solidarity. So I would just like to thank you all for coming. I would like to again thank our co-sponsors and our seven panelists for being on this panel. Um, in addition, I would just like to remind you guys that this shouldn't be an end to conversations about feminism as Sawani, intersectionality as Sawani, and how it relates to people. Talk to these people, learn about their experiences, talk to your friends, create discussions and things like that. This should not be the end. And I, again, I would just like to thank you all for coming out.